Hello and good afternoon, friends and followers of Be Weightless. My name is Jen Espinosa Kaswami. I'm a health coach who helps women stop starving so they can start living a life they love with a body they love even more without sacrificing precious time with their family. And I do appreciate you joining me live or watching the replay today. If you are hopping on, please just comment and say hi so that I can see who's joining me. Now today I wanted to share a very quick video with you about the mental game because I'm going through some mental game myself and I'd love to share some things that have worked for me in the past and some things that I know I'm struggling with today so that you can also take these tips and find ways to accelerate your own game when it comes to your health and wellness. So are you ready to, to dive right in? First of all, what is the context of this conversation today? I um, I recently injured my leg. I was at the trampoline park with my kids and I was jumping and this is not my first rodeo. I've been to the trampoline park before. I've been um, consistently exercising since January with um, you know, strength training, resistance training, that sort of thing. So, you know, my fitness game has been pretty strong. So I didn't consider it a thing when I was at the trampoline park, but I was trying a new technique where I was trying to slam dunk a basketball um, off of a trampoline. So I was trying to jump on this trampoline uh, strong enough so that I could shoot into the air at least, oh gosh, this hoop was like 10 to 12 feet tall. So I had to jump hard enough so that I could get high enough to slam dunk this basketball. I have no interest in slam dunking, I never have, but I'm like, that looks like fun and these little kids are doing it on a shorter hoop and I wanna see if I can do this. So I gave it a shot. Unfortunately, I did not have a good experience. I tore some tendons in my knee, so now I'm in the place where I cannot exercise. Um, I'll show you my leg here because you'll be like, what are you talking about? Oh, you can't see my leg. Anyway, I have a brace on my knee, so literally I'm hobbling around like some sort of crazy duck, and I am not able to exercise. Let me rephrase that. I am not able to do the same types of exercises I was doing before. And I wanted to share this with you because what it all boils down to is not that I'm physically incapacitated, it's how I react to it mentally. So today we're talking all about your mental game and how you can improve your mental game no matter what your typical excuses are or your typical concerns are when it comes to improving either your fitness or your meal planning um, strategies. So I'm going to talk more specifically about fitness because that's something that I'm personally going through. But you can certainly apply this to your you know, healthy eating program as well. So first of all, your body can't go where your mind can't. And whenever we fall through an injury or have some sort of physical limitation, um, we tell ourselves, it's not that someone else is telling us this, we tell ourselves, I can't do it right? Or even worse, I shouldn't do it. I say that should is worse than can't because should is the, the gray area between I know I can't do it and I think I can't do it. So should is actually more dangerous for your mental game than any other word you can possibly use. I can't do it is something where you've probably had experience that you can't. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. Still recuperating from a sickness as well. It's that time of season. So here, we're talking about can't versus should. Shouldn't. Can't is where you probably have tried before and you failed. And you've done it consistently enough in the past and failed consistently enough that you're like, no, I can't. Or you're going based on the advice of a medical professional. For me, I know that I can't uh, do squats because I've got a brace on my knee and it hurts. So, you know, in my medical doctor said that's probably not a good idea for you um, now the interesting thing about going to the doctor and getting clearance from a doctor because whenever you start a new fitness plan there's always that disclaimer of get permission or approval from your doctor before doing this or any other exercise now we have decided to ignore that warning in most cases but those who are like rule followers and who actually go to their doctor and get clearance what does your doctor typically tell you do what feels good to you most doctors have little to no knowledge of what you physically are able to do. First of all, you see them once a year. How do they know what you can do? Is talking for 20 minutes once a year where you sit there and tell them your complaints, which may or may not have to do with your fitness level, 
Is that enough information for them to be able to tell you what you physically can do? Probably not. Another thing is, um, depending on the program you're trying to take up, your doctor may have little to no knowledge of what that program involves, much less your ability to meet the requirements of that program, which is why it's important to work with personal trainers because personal trainers have a lot more knowledge around fitness and your particular fitness level because they usually test you before you get started. Going off on a little tangent there. So, you know, we, we try to get clearance for things from medical doctors. Um, and even when we specifically ask our doctor, can I do this, they probably don't know if you can do it. So we're in that weird space, right, where you know you can't do what you were doing before, and your doctor is not specifically stating that there's anything in particular you cannot do. That's where we fall into the trap of should. I shouldn't do it. Why? because you might get injured. That's a legitimate excuse because you're afraid to get injured. I get that. I've gotten myself injured. I injured myself just jumping at the trampoline park, which I've done many, many times before. Injuries happen. I actually, I didn't share this with a lot of people, but um, about 10 years ago or so, I slipped a disc in my back by sneezing. It's not because I was you know, doing a hardcore exercise program. It was the most embarrassing thing of my life. I was in my late 20s. I sneezed while driving my car after dropping my child off to daycare. And I was in so much pain, I had no idea what happened. So, you know, injuries happen regardless of whether you anticipate them or not. And some of them are silly and embarrassing and ridiculous and what have you. So this whole idea of I shouldn't do this because I might get injured is bogus. It is bogus. And I can say that as a person who has continued a consistent exercise program after back surgery where I slipped my disc, after having both of my children, and no, not the day after, but within a recent, reasonable period of time after I gave birth, and after having, um, you know, a torn ligament in my knee. I'm used to exercising when I'm at reduced capacity. And so that's why I feel I'm particularly in tune with how you can understand what you can do. Because first, first of all, you already know what your can'ts are. If your doctor specifically stated you can't do it, or if you injured a particular body part that, um, like for me, the squats. I can't do squats with a torn knee. It's just not going to happen. So I know I can't physically do that. So once you've decided for yourself what you physically cannot do, and by this I mean specifically you have tried it multiple times in the past and you can't do it, or you've been cautioned that it's not a good exercise for you, okay, that's your cannot do's. Perfectly okay. Now let's look at what you shouldn't do, because this is the place where most of us trip, us trip ourselves up and get confused. We're not strengthening our mental muscle. I can tell you right now that I probably shouldn't do weight-bearing exercises right now, at least not for my lower body. However, however, I could still try and see if my body reacts. And this is where the rubber meets the road, because until you try something, you really will not understand what you can and cannot do right? So even if you're going against someone's advice and someone says don't do this and you try it and you're not hurt and you don't injure yourself, as long as you take it slow, take it at a pace that feels comfortable for you, take it at a weight that feels comfortable for you, you can do it. So the whole purpose of this video today is to tell you your body cannot go where your mind is not willing to go. So regardless of what your fitness level is today, suppose it's been ages since you've exercised, suppose it's been um, a while because you had an injury, maybe you're concerned that you're going to re-injure yourself. That's okay. I understand what that feels like. But until you start experimenting with, um, what do they call it, modifications to exercises you successfully completed before, you really don't know whether you can or cannot do it. I would ask you, and my challenge to you, is to try just one thing that you shouldn't do. 
And by shouldn't, again, I mean it's something that you have not failed at before, but you also maybe have never been able to do it before. That's that gray area. That's where growth happens. That's where you surprise yourself with your amazing ability to do things you've never done before. And that's why I took my dog for a walk today, even though, even though my husband told me not to. He said, oh, you just rest today. You put your leg up and you rest. Um, sorry, my dog was whining. She needed to go out and I took her for a walk. I listened to my body and my body was telling me, don't go that fast. Your dog is very excited. She's pulling on the leash, but do not let her go that fast. I didn't let her go that fast, and by the end of the walk, she was walking right next to me and was not trying to pull on me. So I took it at my own pace, but I did it, and you can do it too. So today's video was about the mental game. What is your current mental game? Where are you feeling like you should or shouldn't do something? And please share with me, because I'd love to hear what you tell yourself you shouldn't do. It always fascinates me what people tell those tell themselves they shouldn't do. Half the time it's not true and half the time it's it's based on something that never existed. So I'm just curious to hear share with me in the comments when you're watching this video. What do you feel you shouldn't do when it comes to your fitness? And then tell me why. Why does that come up for you as something you shouldn't do? Now remember, I stated the difference between can't and shouldn't. If you're not sure what that is, go back to the beginning of this video and watch it. So this is Jen Espinosa Kaswami. Thank you for joining me. I'm still recuperating from my busted knee tendon, but that doesn't mean I can't do other forms of fitness, and I will explore those. I will experiment with those, and I will listen to my body, and I'm urging you to do the same as well. Don't forget to share with me what you shouldn't do or feel you shouldn't do and why in the comments, and I'd love to start a conversation with you about things you may not be aware of when it comes to those types of things. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I have to get going. I think I should rest because my I told my husband I would rest. <laughs> so thank you for joining me and I'd love to hear what you have to share about what you shouldn't do and how you can up your mental game from there. Have a good af afternoon. We'll talk soon.